welcome everybody. Yeah, so it is part of Mapbox Cities, and again, like the panel before, this is not a Mapbox session. It's really more, it was an interesting um, experience for us um, as part of Mapbox Cities, doing some research into um, what local government officials, um, what their plans are for their open data portals, and then at the, the other end of the spectrum talk with OpenStreetMap contributors worldwide on what they think, how they could better work with open uh, data from cities, um, uh, from city governments. And it, what we found out, it was literally two different worlds and they seem to not ever talk with each other. Um, I don't, I hope this is not the case everywhere, but um, the idea for this panel literally is to change that instantly here for the situation in Boulder. So we have a great panel with people from the, from the local and state level government um, here. And um, just on the format of this, we're going to you know, talk through the city side and the government side of things, and then open up the conversation to all your questions, your ideas and your comments, um, and hopefully also some experiences from other parts of, you know, the US, but maybe also from other parts of, of, of the world. So let's see how that goes. Ron, welcome. Sorry. Uh, if it's on, okay. Uh, my name is Ron Pringle. I'm the open data manager for the beautiful city of, Col uh, city of Boulder in Colorado that we find ourselves in. My name is Andrew Cole, and I manage a program at the state level uh, out of the Secretary of State's office. It's called the Business Intelligence Center. We work to make data public, uh, especially for business decision making, and we run an app challenge called Go Code Colorado. And my name is Christy Spielman. I'm a GIS analyst for Boulder Parks and Rec, and I'll just add, so I work for government now, but um, in my past life, I worked for a nonprofit organization in New York City that started the Oasis NYC mapping program in 2000, where we were, I was on the other side of the table fighting the New York City government to share data. So I now appreciate both sides <laughs> of that conversation. Uh, absolutely. So yeah, we, we try to make it um, uh, you know interesting for all of you, and it's good to have someone that has experienced um, different um, you know parts of of this. So Ron, tell us. Um, so in the back, we're just like walking through the the the, the open uh, um, open oh, data great. portal. And um, so I know that I think you started a few years ago. And what has been your challenge since? Um, you know, a lot of our challenges are internal, just trying to acclimatize uh, city government to the concept of open data, um, but also then out, out, you know, external um, and working with citizens and, and businesses and the local community and trying to acclimatize them to open data and what it can be used for. One of the things I think we struggle with most right now as we've really started to ramp up our program is how we um, work with people like you to get value out of our data, because um, that's really important for us too, because we need to actually show that there's value to doing this work, and that will help feed our um, continuing uh, release of open data as we go through the city, and, and uh, we need to be able to sell that internally. And so we're really just looking at, at ways that we can partner with people uh, around how they use open data in the city, and what kinds of projects they do and visualizations and just generally how we can make those connections and work with each other. Great, yeah, so we have obviously Andrew um, who's working a lot with, um, well, on one hand, um, government organizations and, um, well, teaches them to get more data um, in the open and um, better data as well. And on the other hand, also, we, you know, gets, you know, gets, people to use that data. So maybe you have some recommendations or um, specifically for, for the city of Boulder here or any ideas that, from your experience with, the, with Go Code Colorado? Uh, so when I, when I talk about uh, Go Code Colorado, I often have a slide with the, the picture of the image from Field of Dreams because if you build it, they will come is not true in open Easy. data. <laughs> It's very much not true. So um, when we started uh, our program, again, the goal is to make uh, state-level data across agencies. We're actually a small agency, 130 people. We answer to our separate elected official. Um, but we, th we thought uh, if there was, there was data across all the agencies that could be helpful if we could get it into the hands of business decision makers, because um, those are our clients, those are our customers, that's where our funding comes from. Um, when we started out, we, we had a classic chicken and egg problem. Agencies didn't 
work to make their data public, or they made it public on their own website in a format that wasn't machine readable, wasn't updated on a regular basis, didn't have quality metadata, so you lacked context to use it. And then we have an extremely vibrant uh, and strong startup and tech culture in Colorado right now, all kinds of creative, smart people who can take data and do creative things with it. But uh, they didn't know where to get data. They didn't think of it as a resource to use to provide solutions. Um, so we started, so over the last four years, we've, we've worked to publish data on behalf of other state agencies to take away that resource uh, constraint as one of the things that keeps them from making data public. But at the time when we got started, we, we created Go Code Colorado. Uh, it's an app challenge. It's, we don't use the term hackathon just because it's bigger and more involved, but it's, um, it's in that same vein. And we saw it really as a way to build momentum. Um, I see it now looking back four years later that it was absolutely necessary to build momentum, but I also see it uh, as a feedback loop that um, you're never going to get open data right the first time. It's an ongoing and continuous process, and there needs to be a place, whether that's a physical location like a conference or whether that's a, an event series like a, like a challenge, there needs to be somewhere where people who use data can talk to the people in government who create it and that the people inside government can take the feedback and that they can tell the people who use data, you know, here are the known limitations, here are, um, I think that that's a really Im important cycle. So um, if you're in government and uh, you make your data public, there has to be some level of engagement. We do it on a pretty big level. We have a large budget to do it. Uh, you don't have to start there, but you have to start somewhere. And if you're outside uh, the, the government and the, in the end user community, um, try to find a way to, to communicate, especially let the government know you're using it. Uh, because like I said, there are lots and lots of reasons people don't wanna make data public within government. Some of them are, are legitimate, some are not, but um, no one's gonna take time and energy to do something if they don't think people are using it. So if you are using open data right now um, and you've never let the government know, try to find the agency, and even if there's nothing wrong with it, say thank you. Um, and if there is something wrong with it, try to give them feedback. They might be open to it, they might not, but um, let them know you're using it. Perfect, yeah, thank you. Well, there's always this um, argument that if city open data would be in OpenStreetMap, then instantly there would be more people having access to that um, same data set and would be using it. So the example was very relevant for <laughs> Boulder was so if there would be for example a data set of um, uh, like drinking water or drinking fountains um, that is on OpenStreetMap then an app that uses OpenStreetMap could look uh, could literally work everywhere around the globe uh, using OSM tags and pulling that information into um, visualizing it for the the hiker that goes to all these cool mountain outdoor places um, but I wonder if that's really as easy as it is for the city of Boulder to you know um, as an argument to get um, all their open data right away into OpenStreetMap. Let's um, hear yeah, from Yeah, so <laughs> when I first started, Ron said, we have somebody who wants to know where the water fountains are, and this is a perfectly reasonable request. We live in a climate that is dry, lots of very active people. Gosh, as a community member, I want to know that too. But then as now being from on the government side of things, um, that's not so simple to solve. In Boulder in particular, it, there are three different government departments that have three different data sets that might, may or may not, contain water fountain information. So that coordination is one challenge. Like, and I should clarify, I'm Parks and Recreation, but Boulder has a whole, and so that's the traditional soccer fields, the recreation centers, the stuff inside the city of Boulder. But we have a whole nother department that manages all the hiking trails that Boulder is famous for. So that's a whole different department. And so GIS, we need to coordinate our GIS data and that's difficult and can be challenging to break down those departmental barriers sometimes. But then in addition to that, water fountains are outside. We live, I mean, hopefully you won't experience this tomorrow, but we can go through in the fall and the spring 70 degree shifts in temperature. They're just very unreliable on whether or not they're gonna work. <laughs> and so as a city, this, as you elevate this request up the chain, it becomes a, ooh, I don't know, how, you know, you know, if we're promising access to water, are we then liable and then, 
then you find yourself in the open data sort of cycle of like, well, we collect it for our asset management purposes and for our own business needs. And it obviously, I feel it should be open data, but then you have to start educating people internally too on the value of open data and that we trust the community is. And, and then there's also the question of, well, maybe this should be the kind of data set that comes from the ground up from the community. Yep, there's water there. It was working yesterday or something like that. And how do we really create an application that's a lot more dynamic um, and relevant to real time conditions? Um, so. Absolutely. I think, Ron, I think you want to add something there, right? <laughs> yes, I think that hits on a great point is um, collaboration and, and how we can do that with the community. And <clears throat> while water fountains may, may seem trivial to some people, like Christy said, it's not here. And, and um, I think that's a great avenue for participation by the community and obviously not the only avenue. And those are the kinds of relationships we're interested in exploring because we even though we're in government, we don't have all the answers. I know that's really surprising to everybody. Um, so, you know, we, we do want to seek out other opinions and, and um, take in data when and where it's possible, but also please understand that government traditionally is cautious um, and it moves slowly and it's not as organized as people think it is probably from the outside. So we are dealing with those problems too, and, and we just ask for your patience when you try to work with us. Great, thank you very much. I think that's a pretty good you know, point to actually switch over to the, um, hopefully the community side of things. Um, is there maybe someone in the audience that um, has a comment or question at this point from maybe experience in another setting? Yep, if you wanna. A uh, question I have is, about open data, kind of the reverse is cities using OpenStreetMap as open data. There seems to be some friction about it's not uh, from a verified source or an authoritative source. Uh, how can you get cities to be more receptive to actually using volunteer geographic information like OpenStreetMap? Um, so I, I think the answer is come talk to me. Because um, we'd like to really establish that relationship and it really is about trust. Um, I don't know. and. Christy can probably talk a little bit more about this. She's the GIS person, I'm not. Um, but it really is about building those relationships and I think that within government, that, that's a new experience um, because they've traditionally viewed themselves as the, the uh, keeper of the data. And that obviously has changed a lot in the last 10 years and will continue to change. And uh, I think we just need to crack that nut, and, and we do that by communicating, talking to each other. So seek me out, seek Christy out, um, seek Andrew out, and come talk to us. Yeah, I would just add education. I had a meeting yesterday with the whole city of Boulder, the kind of the upper level GIS analysts in the entire city, and told them that I was coming here. And a lot of them were like, well, I'm just not sure how to justify how it's relevant, how an open street map conference is relevant to my job. And I think that's just education. You know, it's just not, and I, to be honest, I wasn't sure either. <laughs> but, and so, you know, like a program that helps bridge that gap um, or maybe some training materials directed at GIS analysts in, in local governments and how you might engage. I mean, obviously for parks and recreation, like I was hired in part because I have that community participation side of things. So that is kind of a, the liability is a little bit less with parks and recreation, except when it comes to water here. Um, you know, that that might be a good entree, but I think it's just making the connections and educating yeah, people. it sounds like, yeah, there is a lot of, um, you know, knowledge transfer, transfer that needs to happen. Um, part of the research we've done with cities as, you know, that, that, that Mapbox Cities um, uh, program, we also found that a lot of the, you know, terms and tools that we use every day, they are not do so difficult, but it's not part of a typical GIS analyst's job to learn um, how to interact with the community and learn how to edit um, using ID or, or JOSM. So I think it's a good um, starting point and uh, we're, we're working on actually getting a handbook out there that um, includes some good case studies from other parts of the world where the OSM community and the city have been working very closely together. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if there's some other people that have been 
working on um, imports or working with the OSM community, uh, with the local government and the OSM community to um, improve the data inside OpenStreetMap. I know, I know there's two, so. <laughs> yeah, so I started an import of sidewalks in San Jose and it wasn't well received. I think ways are very important and connected ways. And so don't start there if you're gonna do anything. <laughs> Um, but I work for a transportation agency and we use OpenStreetMap for our trip planner and we want better pedestrian routing. And so, you know, the city of San Jose had all this really accurate ortho imagery of sidewalk data and we took it and we wanted to bring it to the community and make more things happen. And you have to have a little more will to push the city to, you know, maybe it has to come from outside the city. Maybe the city needs to say, you know, next time we put a sidewalk, let's just put it in an open street map. And we don't need it to be perfectly geographically accurate, but it's really close. And it can be useful for more people. That's all I have to say. Great, thank you. And then this one. Perfect. Um, so I'm Dennis. I did the import for Ottawa, the building import. Uh, that had a little um, feedback. But uh, we've actually learned a lot from the city and stuff. So essentially, is some imports are actually multi-step import. You know, you, you would start with your building imports, and then later on, if the city opens up different data sets like elevation or addresses, so sometimes you can start with an import and it can be very small, and it can get really big really fast, but at least if you start somewhere, so we actually worked with the city, they, uh, they opened up the, the license, that was the biggest hurdle, is open data license. The city thought they had open data, but it wasn't actually open. They had a little caveat, said, hey, if you sue us, you can't use the data. Uh, so we had to change the uh, license. Once the city changed the license, then we're able to do the import, and obviously the community buy-in, the whole wiki page. Uh, it takes multiple steps, so definitely take an import about six months uh, to kind of plan ahead, but uh, it can definitely be in multiple steps. You know, first you do the building imports, maybe merge the addresses, then you can do elevation. Um, so I think, and after it's maintenance, right? Once, once you do the full import, then you need to maintain that data. So whether that be working with the cities or working with the local community, having platforms to maintain that data is a next, next step. And that's where we're at right now, is the maintenance of that data. Yeah, so I think um, we're really interested in that too, and that what that process looks like, and I'll tell you I don't have a clue right now. Um, <laughs> that's good. Um, but yeah, we're, we're happy to work with people on that, and we do have a lot of data available right now, and we have, I think, a really good uh, license. We use Creative Commons Zero uh, to license everything. If that doesn't work, I'd love to hear about that, because I think that's one of the most um, easy to use licenses for data. And we do have a lot of really great data up there already, including LIDAR, um, uh, addresses, uh, street center lines. I don't know that we have sidewalks up there, but. There's a lot of good stuff, so I, I would explore it. Yeah, I think some of the things you've, you've mentioned were about also the import guidelines. Um, it's, a, it's almost like a jungle of Wikipedia pages, um, unless you're really familiar with them um, or with the technology that is needed or the technical capabilities of, that are needed, it's very confusing. So um, kind of throwing that at uh, city employees is literally impossible. Um, also, especially if you're not familiar with OpenStreetMap. Um, so part of um, you know, us being here, we also wanna kind of start this conversation about the, um, the import guidelines. Um, and then at the same time, I know that um, Ron and um, Christy are very, very interested in continuing the um, conversation with specifically the local community um, here in Boulder to talk about how they can get going um, with um, you know, working closer together. So we are going to continue this conversation more specifically about Boulder in the room just behind this, um, just after this panel. I wonder if anyone has any closing remarks or any questions that should be, you know, should, should, should be said today. So I think you want to. So on the note of uh, giving thanks where thanks do, I just wanted to say to Mr. Pringle um, a really big thank you for having that open data portal. So I'm a student here at CU Boulder. I've taken a few GIS courses and I've seen umpteen projects that the students have done on the Boulder data that you have available. Well, first off, thank you. Um, it's always nice to get positive feedback. That's something we don't get a lot of in government, actually. 
shocking. Um, and that's great. I would love to know more about those projects because we're always looking for examples to put up on our uh, open data catalog so that we can show not only internally how people are using data, but also um, externally to the rest of the community who maybe don't have um, very good ideas about what this data can be used for. So I'd love to talk to you. So. Yeah, that internal, just to add, that internal education, right? Like you could teach the GIS analysts, but then we need to teach why the, our supervisors or others what the business case is, why we should be spending our time of your money, <laughs> right? Like. Um, doing this, and so we need that. We need those positive, that positive feedback to help build the snowball, so to say. Yeah, just to drive the point on, let me give you an analogy. When um, uh, career services people or recruiters talk about your uh, resume, if you have a um, typo on your resume, it's like hiring managers have to go through so many of them. They're just looking for a reason to get rid of it. Um, a lot of people who, who make decisions wherever they are in government around open data are looking for a reason to not make their data public or not have to continue to make their data public. So, uh, so again, it, it, you know, um, like, like we're all saying uh, say thank you, but then also uh, ask for feedback, send it in. You're, and you're not always gonna hear back, um, but the more we can show to a skeptical data steward, look at what someone did. I mean, that's the promise, right, of, of open data, the way, the way I see it. We inside government create data for our own purpose, whether that's regulatory, compliance, whatever it is, um, and that almost always, outside of that purpose, it has some other useful value. Um, but we in government, we know what it's useful for because that's what we created it for and that's why we maintain it. And I don't say that critically. We all live in our own world. But the, the idea is when you get it outside and you give it to someone who... Um, has a different perspective, and especially when you can start putting it together across agencies horizontally within government and then vertically from the different levels, you can create new and different things. And unless um, we inside government are seeing those on a regular basis, um, we either don't have the creativity to actually just believe it's true, or we're actively looking for reasons to, to not have to believe it's true. So keep that in mind. Perfect, thank you very much for everyone um, contributing to this. Um, big thank you to Paige as well because she's been really helping at the back end to, to build it all together. Um, so we're going to talk further with, the, with everyone from the city of Boulder and anyone that wants to work closer with the open data um, team. So please join us over there. And if not, um, any time, please come and uh, talk to any of us today. <laughs> we're happy to talk about exactly this um, uh, very specific, um, very Seems seemingly very challenging uh, um, issue with open data and um, OpenStreetMap. Thank you.